things that we can be doing? And what, how should we even begin to wrap our heads around the problems facing America today? And it's not a complicated thing. The problem is we don't have people, uh, we don't have this mind of Christ to be able to see things the way they are. Uh, you know, he didn't wake up today all stressed out about what's going on in the world. He doesn't watch the evening news and go, things are on fire. I've got, you know, what do we do? He's not scratching his head. He's in complete control. And so if we are, are our minds are blown and we're not in complete control because we're not right with him or one with him, then, uh, then we're going to be off kilter and we're going to be full of anxiety. And we're going to be depressed and discouraged and we're going to sound like the rest of the world that has no hope as if we've never even met them before, right? But the way that, uh, the, the whole point of Righteous Nation is that there is hope for America because there are still people who acknowledge God in America. There are still people here who focus on, on Him and what His agenda is in the world. You know this, He makes no mistakes. Amen. Where we are right now, where America is and where we are positioned in the world is exactly where He is knew we would be, has allowed us to be, and so it's not a surprise. Which means, okay, great, now what are we supposed to do? How do we move forward? When you switch from seeing that to seeing there is great opportunity right now and just being in the United States. Uh, so much of the world is looking to us. I took calls this afternoon from some world leaders. I took it all uh, uh, in Africa. Uh, and uh, some things that uh, we're doing in Ukraine, and some things we're doing in Israel, and some things that we're doing uh, in South America. And uh, I can tell you they're all looking to the United States to stand for righteousness again. They don't care about a lot of the details of policy that all of us talk about sometimes. What they care about is, will America do right again? That's how they talk about it. Will America be the beacon of light, a beacon of hope for the rest of the world to follow? Will America be, uh, have, have, have character once again, a nation of integrity? And, uh, and that's what they're looking for, us to be that, that, uh, that, 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 that lighthouse be, so that they can stand strong in their countries and their nations. And in the vacuum of American leadership, other chaos around the world pops up. And so one of the reasons why I was running for president is because no amount of policy will fix the United States of America. No a politician is going to fix the United States of America. Uh, no one person is the answer to solving America's problems. The truth of the matter is that America needs God, and an America without God will fail. So we must acknowledge God in America again. And, and what does that mean to be a righteous nation? I go off of a couple of things. You know, normally you hear campaign promises and things like that. The only thing I ever say and have to promise are things that I'm not the guarantor of. Because most promises, especially campaign-wise, you're not the only person in the room that affects that decision. I can't pass laws by myself, right? Yes, we can issue executive orders. There's things we can do. But... Uh, but it is not a unilateral position. It is an office of we the people. You're a representative of 400 plus million Americans. And, uh, and so I can tell you that from, from my perspective as president, to be a, uh, I can guarantee that righteousness exalts a nation because God said it does in Proverbs 14 34. I can promise you that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord because he said it was. I can promise you that in Psalm 8.15 it says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. See, we still think that it goes by the vote, just the vote. Or we think it's our electoral college. Or we think it's our form of government. But God said, by me kings reign. And that's a pretty impressive promise because he said all power is held in his hand in heaven and earth. So if he has all power and he says, by me kings reign, he gets to choose who and where and when that power is bestowed. So it doesn't matter what we see. We walk by faith, not by sight. That, and the whole point of a righteous nation, people say, what does that look like? What does that even mean? I can tell you one, the, one of the starting points for me is, and especially leading up to the Iowa caucus, I was doing a lot of soul searching about this. And there, 
people would equate me running against Donald Trump as David versus Goliath. And I, I went with that a lot of last year uh, because obviously there is that visual. But leading up to the Iowa caucus, and God was doing a great work there, uh, and we were seeing a lot of support in the last couple of weeks leading up to that, that's still continuing to this day. And what I realized was that Trump was not Goliath. It was what was behind him. It was the spirit of idolatry in America that is the Goliath of our day. And so just like Jeremiah 1.10, we want to pull down the strongholds of idolatry in the United States. We have set up the golden calf. We have worshipped money. We have worshipped people. And... For God's blessing to be on these United States, once again, we must pull down those strongholds and destroy the high places, the golden calves that we're worshiping in the United States. And I'm doing that as president by acknowledging God in America again. That's how I will pull down the strongholds in America. Uh, and that's something that God has to do that, in terms of putting me there. We do our part. You do your part. I do my part. We stand for righteousness. Uh, you know, I, my, my actual platform is uh, economy, national security, and family. Because I believe that the strength of the family is the strength of the nation. I think if you have a strong family unit, a mother, a father, and children, That's and you right. have a loving home and a loving marriage, and if you have a president that promotes that and supports that and empowers that and, and, and even in society supports that and provides resources to strengthen families again, your economy goes up. The anxiety goes down, depression goes down, team, uh, you know, suicides go down, incarceration rates go down, drug use goes down uh, because you have a strong family unit. You know, uh, if, if, if we had strong families, you wouldn't have all of the, all of the culture wars that people talk about fighting. You wouldn't have to worry about those as, uh, because all of the kids would be like, that's nonsense, next. Uh, this generation wouldn't tolerate it if they came from strong families. The only reason that stuff works it's because usually there's a bro there, there's the home isn't right. There's problems in the marriage, or it's, there's problems. There, there's single family homes and uh, single parent homes. That is, and uh, just a lot of challenges. And and I, we, John and I were talking before, but I was saying, look at the last 15 years. You can't show one television program where there was a traditional family with a hardworking father, with a with a wife and children. That did not, and if there is a traditional family, which there might be one or two, very rare, they're going to make the man look like the biggest buffoon you've ever seen in your life, and he can't even tie his shoes, and he, you know, he can't do anything right, and they'll just mock him. That is intentional, because it destroys the fabric of a society. One of the things working with African nations, these are, some of them are godless nations. They don't acknowledge God in their country. Um, they're not trying to be a righteous nation, and yet they put in laws that protect family units because they know that's how you have a strong economy. That's also how you have a strong national security. What does family, a strong family, have to do with strong national security? Several things. Number one, if you have a strong family, uh, they're not as susceptible to the propaganda. They're not as susceptible to uh, the other ideologies and influences that come from other, from other nations. Uh, that, that other nations spur inside of the United States. Uh, they also think very differently about things. If you have a strong family, the people who fell most for some of the lies of the government, let's say during COVID or during uh, 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 some of the, the wars that we've had, the, the people who usually are the most gullible to being lied to government lies are those that have the, the home is not very strong. When you have, and, and there's so much, many correlations here over and over and over. So it protects your national security. It protects you against even lies. Because when you come from a loving home, a loving environment where you have the traditional family unit, there's a different discernment. You process things differently. So mass media can tell you every night this or that. You could look at social media and see all of this and you're going, that's not, that doesn't even make sense. But if you don't have some kind of a stable foundation over here, you will fall for anything. 
And it doesn't make them bad people. I feel my heart goes out to them. See, that's where I think Republicans get it so wrong in, uh, with, uh, against Democrats, and Democrats do the same thing against Republicans. They demonize one another, and the truth is they're both victims to this broader uh, spirit that is taking over America. And they don't realize they're both pawns in the bigger game. This is a spiritual war that the United States of America is in. And if you want to look at who should be the next president of the United States, normally if we were in a physical war, like when George Bush was going to the re-election in 2008, we said, we don't want to switch horses in the middle of a war. You keep with the same one. Uh, and so we said, okay, he already knows how to fight this war. He's already engaged in the strategy. Uh, and if we were in turmoil financially, we are. Uh, you would want somebody who is good at economics. You want somebody who's a business person, not just a government hack. You want somebody who knows economics. Uh, but, and, 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 of course, and, and of course I do. But what the biggest challenge of our time is not even the economy, and it's and it's not even just the national security. It is the spirit that is attacking the United, the spirits that are attacking the United States of America. And there is no other place to go. There is no other place to go that can be the beacon of light and hope for the world. That's not just because we have a great currency or had a great currency, a strong currency, or that we were the uh, you know the, the dollar was the, the standard that most of the currencies in the world are pegged to, the world's reserve currency. You know, it's not just because of our economic might. It was, it was because of, and not just even because of the freedom. We're not, by the freedom scale, the freest country in the world. It was because we acknowledged God and we had the blessing of God for all of our flaws. We had the blessing of God in America on this nation. And he has prospered us and he has blessed us. And if we don't return to righteousness and acknowledge God in this country again, we will lose it. And it's interesting because those who have the most to lose usually do the least to preserve it. And that is where America is today. And that is everyone's prerogative, but there is a few people, a remnant, that will stand for righteousness and still stand and do what is right. And we keep fly, getting on planes and getting in vehicles and going to West Palm Beach, Florida, or Los Angeles, California, or New York, New York, wherever it is that we're going, to stand and to give this message. And we're finding that it really resonates. Because when people understand that it's not Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party, uh, it is about the United States of America. It is that we are being attacked by a spiritual war. And in, in my opinion, there's only one of us. I've met the other presidential candidates. And I'm telling you, there's no one else that is even remotely understands that there even is a spiritual war, much less what to do to fight and win a spiritual war. That should keep people awake at night to no end. But there's hope, there's an answer, and with the help of God, we'll get there. Pray for us, because this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, the Green Party, and I'm not a member of the Green Party, I don't support most of the national platform of the Green Party, uh, but the Green Party of Alaska specifically has some uh, some things where they're a lot more independent, um, and they are hosting a presidential debate this Wednesday night with candidates from all political parties. Uh, well, they they threw it out to all the uh, and we filled out uh, all of the different things, and they selected seven of us to debate from the different parties. So I'll be representing the Republican Party, and uh, this Wednesday night. Uh, and we've got, uh, there'll be a Democrat candidate, uh, there'll be an uh, independent libertarian, Green Party. Anyway, there's seven of us. And uh, let me tell you why this is important. One of the candidates, her platform is, ru she's running on two things. To remove the words under God from the Pledge of Allegiance and to remove in God we trust from the currency. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes I, it's the first time in this presidential race when I looked and I thought, this platform that seems totally detached from so much of what the other candidates are running on. And then whenever I saw that, when you get out of the Republican echo chamber in silo, and you start looking at the other presidential candidates, and you realize they're running on removing God. I'm running on acknowledging God. Now, the United States is having the conversation that I knew we should have had a year and a half ago when he called me to run for president. That is the conversation for this time in history. Will you acknowledge him or will you reject him? And I will tell you, don't be surprised if he is rejected. 
He, God has, uh, Jesus has lost his two, two elections he's been in. He lost whenever he, uh, whenever Israel said, well, we want a king. Jesus, God said, I'll be your king. Why do you want a physical king? I'll be your king. They said, no, 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 we want the physical king. They, he get, they get Saul. And then, uh, you know, uh, Pilate is saying, well, I'll either, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? Uh, you know, and they said, uh, you know, crucify him, give us Barabbas. He lost that vote. Okay? That's why we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by what is. It does, was, was he wrong? Was God wrong in both cases to do what he did and say what he said? No. And neither are we. Uh, when you stand for righteousness and when you follow his will uh, for your life. So that's why we're running, uh, and, and that's why Righteous Nation is so important. This message of Righteous Nation is so much more important than even a political campaign. It is so much above the presidency of the United States. The presidency can come and go. The United States of America will come and go. Those the promises of God abide forever. And they're good for any nation. Because righteousness exalts a nation uh, and sin is reproached to any people. The, the righteousness, the, what's interesting is that's not just a promise for the United States. Right? If, if uh, Kenya accepted that, uh, then they would be blessed. If uh, Ukraine accepted that, if Japan accepted that, that is given to any nation because the nation's constantly changing, evolves. The lines are changing so much around the world. The borders are being fought over almost every part of the world right now. So really fascinating, including the United States of America. Uh, you probably don't know that Hawaii is trying to, to not only secede, they're saying they never were apart. Uh, and the United Nations recognized that in 2012. The king of, uh, uh, the, king of the Atui tribe, uh, of the, uh, uh, and who's head of the Polynesian Islands, uh, they, have, they still have their tribal law, and they have pacts and charters with the United States uh, from 150 years ago where it was separate that never were, 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 were nullified. So they're saying they're not even a proper state of the, of the United States. Alaska, uh, you know, obviously is, is, is saying they don't even belong to the United States. And, uh, and now there's reasons for that. There, you know, there's spirit of the law, letter of the law. Some, some dots didn't get... Uh, get dotted, and some I's didn't get dotted, or some T's crossed. So there, there are sort of some technicalities that might mean that they're not, but it really is in the spirit of it. My point is it's still being challenged, okay? Ukraine's border is obviously being challenged. Israel's border is being challenged. Uh, uh, everywhere in the world, I remember when Yugoslavia was broken up into, you know, six different countries, uh, the Middle East the lines keep getting redrawn. There's hardly a, obviously they're trying to redraw the lines in Southeast Asia with, the, with uh, what's happening uh, in Taiwan Strait and, uh, and, and with Taiwan. We had the issues just uh, a week ago with AT&T and that was just obviously an upgrade issue and some maintenance issues uh, to some degree. Let me put that asterisk, to some degree. Uh, there was more involved in that. 